I have returned with a new tutorial. Today I will show you guys an incredibly simple C Sharp project. It's perfect for those who are new to C Sharp or anyone that want to expand their programming knowledge. The application you will have at the end is a color picker. This application allows the user to extract any color from the screen that they want. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell. This way you will be noticed whenever I create a new video to follow. If you need help, then write, write it down in the comments or join the Discord. Alright, so let's take a look at what you will have at the end of this tutorial. Here we have my project, color picker. If we run it, it will show this form and we can hold the mouse down on this button and then we can find any color on the screen. There we can find the purple, here we can find the OBS logo colors. Is the red color and you can find whatever pixel pixels color you wanted I hope you enjoy all right let's create this color picker so open Microsoft Visual Studio create a new project choose the Windows Forms app double click on it now we'll need a name i'll call mine color app because i don't have it, any better name for it for the framework .NET 6 once it has loaded we can add some labels and text boxes and so on like you saw in the preview so we need a label Actually, we need two labels, so we'll add two. Then we will need. Nah, let's change the text and so on first. So the first label will have the text color. Put it there. And the second text will have the select color from screen. There we go. Now we need a text box. Add it below the color text. And we don't need to do anything with it yet. We will need a button for the select color from screen stuff. There we go. Change the text to hold mouse down. So they know they need to hold the left button down. Or they'll get a clue from the text. Finally, we'll need a panel. We'll set it to the left of the form. And finally, we'll resize the form to fit. Let's change the text of the form. And now we can uh, start coding. So Double click on the form in the middle of the form to get the load function. You should see this. And here we will create our first method, which will be getting the color of a pixel on the screen or a coordinate, whatever you want to call it. And this method will have the data type color. It will be named get color at and then we will have the parameter point we'll call the variable location there we go so now to get this pixel we will need to use a bitmap like a container then copy the graphics from the screen of the location into this container and then extract the color and to do that in code we'll just 
right using bitmap we'll call this pixel container which will equal a new bitmap the size of this bitmap will be one by one pixel because we only need one pixel below that we will use the graphics this will equals graphics dot from image and then we will use our pixel container so this graphics object will be tied to our bitmap but we will take the graphics copy from screen instead and then paste it into our pixel container so we will need to use firstly the location location and then we will have a point dot empty because this argument is not you uh, we don't need it this argument and finally we will use the pixel container dot size to get our one pixel now that we have copied the graphics from screen into our bitmap we can return it pixel container dot get pixel to get the color and then the coordinates will be zero zero because because it's the first pixel now we have the color of a certain point on the screen let's tie our button clicks so this hold mouse down button we will go down to the events and add a mouse up and a mouse down function or event handler so double click on the mouse down and the mouse up so scroll again now have the mouse down and mouse up now that we have the mouse down and up we'll add a new variable which is called button pressed which will equals the false once we have created this variable we can check if the person who used the application is pressing our button so well when he presses down it will equal to true equals true so the button is pressed it and the boolean is set to true now we can change the cursor icon as well so we get that nice cross earlier shown uh, so cursor equals cursors dot cross there we go but we also need to flip this boolean switch once we uh, leave the button or once we uh, complete our mouse click so at the mouse up we'll set the button pressed to false because we left it and we'll set the cursor to our default cursors dot default there we go and it's not cursors there cursor singular cursors plural now when we press these buttons or when we hold the mouse down on the button we will know by this boolean and we can create uh, another method which will handle these text boxes and so on so it always gets the color from when we hold it down and change this panel so it happens in the background and an easy way to do that is by using threading so at the top include using system dot threading I don't know if this is necessary it might be included but just for safety's sake we'll add system dot threading now in this form one load method we will check for illegal thread calls because we need to change some of the values of these text boxes and so on 
and we need to, need to do that from the thread. So we need to uh, make this false, otherwise it will cause an exception. So after that, we can create a new thread, which will call a method. We haven't created that method yet, so let's do that first. We'll call it void background thread. There we go. And let's call it not background thread. It will be in the background. So when we close the application down, we will also close the thread down. That's a bit important. There we go. So at the form load, we start this thread, which starts this method in a separate thread. So we want this thread to always run, which we equal it to, or we create a while loop. So while true and true is always true, so it will run forever. Within this loop, we will check if we are pressing the button. And if we're pressing the button, we'll create a new point, which will hold the cursor position. And we get the cursor position from the cursor object and then dot position attribute. We get the color from the select Never mind. Uh, we get the color from our get color at method and the cursor's position. So we get color at and then cursor position. We change the panel's color, panel one dot back color. And now we have the selected color, so we can just set it to the selected color. We finally have the text box, but we need to convert our color to a string value. So we can write, uh, let's create a variable for the hex value. So string hex value equals color translator to HTML selected color. So it translates to hex and then text box dot text equals hex value. What are you looking at? So that was pretty quick. Let's uh, test it. Okay, so before I start, I actually found an error and I have uh, an L. <laughs> the location is lowercase and this location here is uppercase. So change this to an L lowercase, otherwise it will not work. So change that and now let's test our beautiful application. Here we have the color picker and let's hold mouse down and now hover over the screen. What are you looking at? So my background is changing as you can see, it's pretty neat. And we can see all of the beautiful colors here. And then just copy the hex color and you can use it for whatever purpose that you need. So that's it for this video. I hoped that it was fun for you guys and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Remember to subscribe.